The pursuit of happiness is one of the oldest pursuits of humankind, and for thousands of years, scholars have asked the question, what is the source of happiness? In ancient Greece, Aristotle proposed that happiness comes from knowing your true self, developing your strengths in accord with your virtues, and being a positive force for your community. Aristotle termed this form of happiness eudaimonia. Another source of happiness is suggested to come from the attainment of pleasure and avoidance of pain when we interact with our environment. This was termed hedonism. Fast forward thousands of years on from the Greeks to now, and science has been able to conceptualise and test theories on happiness to provide answers to the question, what makes a person happy? Science has shown that there are two main sources of happiness. These sources of happiness relate to previous notions of happiness proposed by the Greeks. In line with eudaimonia is psychological well-being, and relating to hedonism is subjective well-being. Psychological well-being represents core concepts that need to be developed for a person to be able to function in a healthy and positive way. The higher the level of each of these core concepts, then the greater the level of happiness a person will experience. Subjective well-being is the cognitive and emotional evaluation of the level of pleasure a person experiences when interacting with their environment. If a person evaluates their interactions with their environments as high in personal satisfaction, high in positive emotional experiences and low in negative emotional experiences, they will report a higher degree of subjective well-being. Over time, each person on earth develops a method for finding happiness, and this method becomes part of the software our minds use to achieve happiness. For some of us, the cause of our happiness comes from the pursuit of eudaimonic goals, while others rely on hedonic methods. As human beings, we all have our unique ideas of how to be happy, and we know the source of our happiness. However, sometimes there are moments in life where we struggle to find happiness. This may be due to the strategy that was successful at one point in life is now ineffective at another point in life. Or it could be down to never having an effective strategy for happiness in the first place. To quote Claude Bristol, happiness is sought by many and found by few. Evidence suggests that both psychological and subjective well-being are important contributors to happiness, but only one form can be considered as the source of authentic happiness. A study from 2010 found that when a person's life is high in both forms of well-being, they report higher levels of overall happiness when compared to a person whose life is only high in either psychological or subjective well-being. Importantly, this investigation also found that psychological well-being interventions produced greater long-term effects on a person's happiness than a subjective well-being intervention. In a separate investigation conducted in 2019, a researcher examined how psychological well-being and subjective well-being impact on each other over time. This study examined data collected from a Western population during 1996, 2006 and 2014. The researcher found both psychological and subjective well-being were stable predictors across time. However, a person's psychological well-being in 1996 was a more reliable predictor of psychological and subjective well-being in the future. The researcher found that psychological well-being scores in 1996 were able to predict psychological well-being and subjective well-being scores in 2006 and 2014, whereas subjective well-being scores were unable to provide the same level of consistency in predicting psychological and subjective well-being scores in the future. This investigation further found that a person with high psychological well-being scores in 1996 would have higher subjective well-being scores in 2006 and 2014, whereas a person with high subjective well-being scores was more likely to have reduced psychological well-being scores in the future. 
This information informs us that although both psychological well-being and subjective well-being goals contribute to a person's happiness, without the pursuit and attainment of psychological well-being goals, a person's happiness will decline. Put another way, the pursuit and attainment of psychological well-being is the route to authentic happiness. We live in a society that endorses the purchasing of products as a means to experience happiness. And when we are born into this worldview, we are born into a society that ingrains into its members that happiness is associated with the attainment of external things, when in reality, happiness existed before modern day cultures. An important thought to consider is that happiness as a human experience is older than the suits that we wear, the watches we collect and the cars we drive. Do not get me wrong, the external things that we buy are fun, they make us feel good and they add value to our lives, but they should not be held in higher regard than developing a positive, healthy and functional character who is able to cultivate positive experiences when interacting with their external world. Authentic happiness is an innate state which is dependent on the person who you are being. Consider this, do you think you would be genuinely happy if you had designer clothes, expensive watches and a luxury car, yet your self value was low, the content of your character was dysfunctional and you spent your hours around toxic people? True authentic happiness is not reliant on the car that we drive or the jewellery we wear but comes from how we develop ourselves as a human being. We can buy all the luxury items we desire to live a grandiose lifestyle so that we seek pleasure and avoid pain, but this means our happiness is dependent on external possessions and is transient. Think of the last time you bought a new accessory, it may have been a watch, some new footwear or some other item. When you first purchase the item, there is a good chance you experience elevated levels of happiness that were due from you attaining the item. Then, as the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the item's happiness value depreciates and it is no longer able to produce the great deal of happiness it once did. The process of investing in external property to produce happiness is empty if you do not experience happiness from within who you are as a human being. Now, imagine a person who has their source of happiness come from the person that they are being. This person will be someone who engages in endeavours that are in accord with their personal values, who is self-accepting of their strengths and weaknesses of character and applies their strengths to successfully navigate their environments, resulting in personal accomplishments, who has high self-esteem but is willing to undertake personal growth when life calls upon them to change who has the capacity to experience a range of positive emotions while being able to cultivate them in others who is able to form healthy and functional relationships with other people and who is able to contribute to their community without that contribution being detrimental to one's own well-being. This person's happiness is neither transient nor dependent on external possessions but instead is stable and comes from the authentic source of happiness which is having high levels of psychological well-being which result in a positive, healthy and functional human disposition. Once the functionality of our character is correct then the attainment of external possessions will enrich our happiness in a healthy way. This disposition is available to every living person on this planet. Through integrating this knowledge into our mind software, you will find that pursuing and achieving a positive, healthy and functional human disposition is the source of authentic happiness.